So Dana White's Contender Series for 2024 will start taking place in August of this year and then will run through for another 10 weeks until October of 2024. And I did make a video one or two weeks ago talking about every single fighter that I knew about at the time that was going to be competing on the show. And I think I had about 26 fighters on that list. Well, now we have 52 fighters. The list has doubled in size. And of course, it will eventually reach 100 confirmed fighters that will be on the show. And then we can start talking about predictions and what we think is going to happen in the show. But for now, we do have 52. And I can assume with a lot of massive regional events that are taking place, on the weekend of me recording this video, there's probably going to be another few that will be added within the next few weeks and will be announced. Of course, there are a lot of other fights that are going to be happening on the regional scene, which a lot of people are calling Dana White's Contender Series Eliminators, so we're going to have to wait for that to happen, but at the moment, 52 fighters, no one out of 100. We know half the season, or who's going to be on the season, at least half of the fighters anyway. I did want to shout out a couple of people, obviously, that are my sources for this. MMA Prospects on Instagram is a pretty big one. A La Mayonnaise on Tapology. Random Knowledge on Tapology. And Saba underscore 2004 are all people that are out there getting the information and reporting on this. I'm going to get through each individual pretty quickly as there are 52 people to talk about. Starting off with Men's Flyweights. I did mention him at the... Um, my other video, Lona Kavner versus Antoine Ho, is a fight that's going to be taking place. A massive prospect versus prospect fight between two of the best flyweight prospects in the world. And also, <laughs> uh, probably some of the better uh, prospects that represent Asia. Of course, Lona Kavner, to my understanding, is half Chinese. But he does fight in Cage Warriors, or has done, until he will be fighting Antoine Ho. Antoine Ho has been fighting in the LFA. Very, very good prospects. Antoine Ho, I feel like, is a little bit more like of a raw prospect, whereas Lona Kavner has a very refined, very high-speed striking style, if, it, if you could say that. I thought he looked really, really good against another undefeated guy, Sean Marcos da Silva, whereas Antoine Ho is pretty well-rounded, but I think that's going to be a great fight that will be pretty good. Another flyweight that will be on the show is Jack Duffy, and he is going to be fighting Mitch Raposo. And Mitch Raposo is being on the show before i believe it was 2021 or 2022 <laughs> 2021 he was on the show and he fought jake hadley who has now gone on to have some mixed success in the ufc he was also on the ultimate fighter season 29 since then i guess what he's done is just got a lot more experience and just become a better fighter you can definitely see the improvements in his more recent matchups and maybe just in hindsight he just wasn't quite ready to be on the ultimate fighter or the contender series but now he's had four fights four fight win streak and he will be taking on the undefeated 7-0 jack duffy who has also been on quite the run four wins by submission for him a couple wins over experienced opponents should be a pretty good matchup Tony Laramie is a rumor, by the way, this is a rumor that I did see, but he is actually the younger brother of former UFC fighter TJ Laramie, and I thought he could have been on the show last year, he was actually meant to fight against Louis Jourdain, who was Charles Jourdain's brother as well, Battle of the Brothers would have been kind of cool, but yeah, apparently if Tony Laramie beats Josh Smith, there's a good chance he's going to be on the show, so definitely look out for that. Moving on to the bantamweights, we have the Georgian fighter Otar Tanzalov, who is 9-0, and and um, he's 5'11 bantamweight, <laughs> it's 9-0, I don't really know what more to say, he's going to be really, really fun if he can get through, had a very short amateur career where he did compete at the European IMMAF Championships, and since then, he's just kind of dominated his way through the regional scene, kind of around around Europe, I guess, the, U the Middle East as well for UAE Warriors, has beaten some decent guys, has finished a lot of opponents, beat a 5 0 opponent in 2021. Definitely a guy to keep your eye out for. A 5 foot 11 bantamweight. I mean, that's Sean O'Malley size right there. Vitaly Yakimenko. It's kind of odd because I, from what I've read, he was told that he was going to be on the contender series if he won his fight against Fareed Alibar Kazidzi. I definitely butchered that name. I am so sorry. But he was going to fight Farid, and he has fought Farid, and he won. And apparently he won impressively, but he missed weight for that fight. So it's not 100% confirmed if he is going to be on the show. But there was also word that he's going to be a reserve, which kind of means a guy that they call on short notice. But I'm not too sure how that's going to work if he's living in Ukraine or if he's living in Poland and the contender series in the USA. 
Just assume Vitaly Yakuminka was going to be on there. Austin Bershi has a fight coming up at Featherweight, but he was also recently announced by MMA Prospects on Instagram to be on the show. And I like it a lot. I don't like the fact that he's fighting at Featherweight because he's not the biggest bantamweight. He's only 5'3", but he is pretty like big. He's pretty bulk. And he has kind of proven himself to be a very, very good prospect. But he did kind of openly come out and say he didn't want to sign to the UFC until he felt like he was ready. And while he's potentially going to be 12-0 soon, potentially 13-0 after the Contender Series, I mean, you really could see Austin Bashi make a name for himself in the UFC. He's definitely one of the better prospects that we have seen in a long time. Only 22 years old, so you can kind of understand why he wanted to give himself more time. And here he is, potentially going to be on the show if he can get past former PFL fighter Ego Huskik coming up pretty soon as well, early June. Adam Bramhold is also another bantamweight that has been confirmed for the show. He's from England with a 13-2 record. And if I'm not mistaken, I think he's on a 13-fight win streak. He's on an 11-fight win streak. Did lose a couple fights early on into his career, but has gone on to win a bunch of fights over in Europe for a pretty long period of time. For a bit, he hasn't really tested himself too much, but he has fought some very experienced opponents, and then recently he has started testing himself against much better opponents, and has been winning those fights by submission and by, by finish in general. So definitely a guy to keep your eye out for, Adam Bramhold, the bantamweight, 5'10 as well by the way, another big bantamweight. Billy Brand is 5-1, but he has recently been taking on some prospects. He had a fight booked against the 2-0 opponent, but that didn't end up happening. He beats another 3-0 prospect, but most notably, he actually has lost to Peyton Talbot. And to be honest with you, I've got a feeling that whoever is scouting for the Contender Series for the UFC probably looked through Peyton Talbot's recent opponents, because I think we can all agree that Peyton Talbot is going to be a superstar in the UFC, and that he's a very, very good fighter, and they probably thought... Who has given Peyton Talbot a pretty tough fight in the past? Let's see if we can find someone. And they found Billy Brand uh, through that. I feel like there's also a couple of other guys on Peyton Talbot's record. Because if you do look at his regional scene tape, a lot of people were able to out-wrestle Peyton Talbot on the regional scene. Not so much in the UFC, but there was a lot of takedown defense questions that were answered on the Contender Series for Talbot. And of course, Billy Brand, being one of those guys, has finished every single one of his opponents, except for a couple, his debut, and then also his most recent win. Has fought for Uriah Faber's A1 Combat, which is a fantastic promotion, in my opinion, as well. Definitely interested to see how he is going to do. Lewis Lee Scott is a very good prospect from England. He is 8-0, beaten some pretty decent competition as well. Just beat Demate Pena. If you don't know who Demate Pena is... He was kind of dominating the scene for quite a while, and then he had a pretty major drug testing scandal and was out for five years, returned to Taylor Lapalus, who's in the UFC, then come back and had a lot of success. But he just lost to Lewis Lee Scott, and now Lewis Lee Scott is definitely on the radar to be a pretty top prospect to keep your eye out for, especially now coming into the Dana White's Contender Series season. Malcolm Wellmaker was also just very recently announced to be on the show, I believe actually just today at the time of me recording this 7-0 uh, once again big time finisher three wins by KO two wins by submission a lot of experienced op opponents on his record big time amateur record as well which you do like to see that's a lot of experience there which a lot of people that do go professional may or may not have a lot of wins for Icon FC, which is Jorge Masvidal's promotion, if I'm not mistaken, and then a couple of other wins for other regional shows. Beaten decent competition, beaten experienced competition, won a lot of fights by knockout. I think he should be a lot of fun. And Akaru Bruto, who I did talk about in the last video, 7-1, was actually pulled from this LFA fight to guarantee his spot on the Contender Series, so I'm kind of assuming that the UFC really wants him on the show or that they think he's really good or maybe they were worried that he wasn't going to beat um this opponent here but yeah he was literally pulled from this LFA event to be on the show so I think the UFC were taking no chances with him maybe they know something about him that we don't but yeah definitely a guy that the UFC is interested in a guy that the UFC has been interested in in the past and actually had a UFC contract Michael Imperato he wasn't the biggest fan of me bringing that up in the last video but Imperato was signed to the UFC in 2014 
made some mistakes, was released, but now has grinded his way all the way back and actually defeated Ricky Bandeas in front of Dana White as a big underdog, and that's why he got the contract. Ricky Bandeas is actually a guy that I kind of hoped was going to make his way into the UFC after Bellator released him, but Michael Imperato has pretty much cut those plans off and is now going to be on the contender series himself. Best of luck to you, Michael. I didn't mean to rub you the wrong way. I was just kind of saying what happened. Ernie Juarez is 8-0, is a featherweight. Is another guy that is on Uri Favor's A1 Combat. Uri Favor, he knows what he's doing with his promotion. Beating a lot of really good opponents as well. 2-1, and 3-0, and 4-0. And, and then a couple of other guys with some really, really nice records. A lot of good wins. Uh, seems to have a boxing background as well that I just found out about recording right now live. But um, yeah, Ernie Juarez, maybe a guy to keep your eye out for as well. Tommy McMillan, another featherweight, is 6-0. and Once again... A little bit inexperienced in the pro scene, but big time experience in the amateur scene, which I think is actually something that we're going to start seeing a lot more of soon. And he started out his career against a 3-0 fighter, which is a pretty tough debut. And then after that, has beaten a couple of guys and then took on some experienced fighters and other prospects as well, knocked him out in 20 seconds. Yeah, definitely, guys, keep your eye out for. Definitely has a lot of, oh, okay, six finishes in the first round. I was going to say a lot of finishes early on. Another big time finisher is Josias Musasa, who I believe is from, yes, I was going to say from Congo, the Dem Democratic Republic of Congo. Big time finisher, I mean, six wins by KO, five of them in the first round. African, um, African Knockout, I believe is the name of this promotion, is actually also a TV show you can watch on Netflix. I don't think Josias Musasa was on the TV show, but pretty much what they are is the ultimate fighter, but for fighters from Africa and on a little bit of a lower budget than the UFCs. But yeah, he's knocked out a lot of guys. He's fought for that promotion as well, African Knockout, which I do think is probably going to make their way up in terms of like regional shows. Definitely interested to see how he goes. Definitely, definitely more interested to see more fighters from Africa get signed to the UFC as well, as they are signing a lot of fighters from Asia with the Road to UFC tournament. They're starting to sign a lot of fighters from Europe, as well as the UK, of course, with... Um, all of their events there, a lot of fighters from France, but not really so much from Africa. It'll be very interesting to see how he goes in the Contender Series. 24 years old, six wins by KO. Looking forward to him fighting, and Michael as well is going to be fighting against Bogdangrad. Bogdangrad uh, fought at lightweight uh, against Tom Nolan. Since then, has beaten a couple of guys, moved down to featherweight, which I think was the right choice. Not only was he undersized against tom nolan he was also severely undersized in a lot of his actually regional shows before that matchup with tom nolan now he's going to be fighting against michael as well who is 9 and 0 um from the usa <laughs> and I've, I've been talking too fast and um yeah 9 and 1 sorry from the usa definitely won a couple of fights recently by knockout definitely a guy to keep your eye out for only 23 years old fighting bogdan grad and um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how Bogdan looks at 145 pounds because now that massive size disadvantage isn't going to be there. And then another fighter with uh, 40 professional fights, and he's not even the fighter with the most professional fights because he's a fighter with 42 professional fights coming up in welterweight. But Rael Tuturuli from Georgia has um, been promised a chance at Dana White's contender series allegedly so he's kind of a rumored fighter but apparently he was told he would be on the show if he won his fight against Andrea Gusto he won that fight in the fifth round according to his Instagram so I think it's probably pretty safe to assume we're going to see a fight with what 41 professional fights compete on the show now let's move on to lightweight and now we move on to the lightweights and beyond. We have Cody Steele as the first lightweight that I'm going to talk about. He was actually told that he had the contender series contract before he fought against Alejandro Martinez, but took the fight anyway and then had a very good performance and finished him in the third round. And to be fair, that's actually really good for him to have that momentum coming into the contender series because I think it would be pretty fair to say that Alejandro Martinez probably is one of, if not the best opponent that he had. So now he's got that experience against a decent opponent or the best opponent that he's ever fought now coming into the contender series. He's also a guy that seems to have quite a bit of hype, a little bit of a fan base behind him. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing how he goes. Kamal Atoni, I made a completely separate video talking about Kamala Tony. He's going to be coming down to 155 pounds 
to fight on the contender series and he is actually the guy who defeated alex pereira all of those years ago in 2015 and alex pereira's mma debut i should say sorry so he holds a win over alex pereira only one of two men to do that in mma and he was actually signed to the pfl but never fought for them i don't know if there were contract issues or he just didn't want to fight for them. I don't. I don't know. But he was just, he was signed to the PFL at some point. Hasn't fought since 2022. Of course, there's going to be a lot of eyes on him, and um, hopefully the UFC gives him a good matchup because I want to see him in the UFC and kind of see how he goes. To be honest, now to move on to the welterweights, Pat Pintlick is nine and one, knocked out his opponent in the last uh, fight that he had. I should say sorry, in front of Dana White as well. I think this was that Canadian event the before. The event in Canada, the pay-per-view in Canada earlier on this year. He is 35 years old, but he did take out a guy in Ryan Leninger, who's a very good fighter, knocked him out in 95 seconds, made that moment count in front of Dana White, and I'm very much looking forward to see how he does go in the UFC, because uh, he does like to knock people out all of his winter by KO. Gage Young is a pretty, well, sorry, young prospect at welterweight. He's 23 years old with an 8-1 record. He's fought for FAC, which I believe was owned or maybe still is owned by James Krause. His one loss did come to Bobby Lee, but Bobby Lee is a former Bellator fighter. So just a guy with a lot of experience, not too much shame in that one there. Good experience, I guess, at the end of the day. Has beaten prospects before, has beaten experienced fighters before. And Mary, Manny Murrow, is this, is this former Bellator fighter as well that I'm thinking of? Yes, okay, I knew I recognized him, so, yeah. Anyway, um, and then he beat a couple of guys that I think just fought him on short notice. He was meant to fight Jordan Griffin, which would have been a very interesting test, but now he's going to get that interesting test in the Contender Series this year. Igor Cavalcanti is 9-0, 26 years old. From Brazil, all of his fights have actually been for a couple of promotions that I'm not too familiar with. So I think it's going to be quite exciting trying to find tape on this guy. But anyway, he's knocked everybody out silly or he submitted them in like, what, the first three minutes of almost every single fight he's ever been in. This guy's going to be fun to watch tape on, but hey, it'll be interesting to see how he goes on the Contender Series. Ming Ding is the fighter I alluded to before, talking about someone that had 42 pro fights. Well, Ming Ding, he's got 42 pro fights and he's only 29 years old. He's actually a guy that I've kept my eye on for for a while because I have always kind of thought that he was one of the better fighters at China, out of China, I should say. He does hold a win over Taiyalaki Nuraji, who the UFC are definitely keeping their eye on right now because this guy is going to he's, he's going to do big things if he can get past uh, Maxim Shimchenko in that um m1 cross with wkg event but yeah tai like is a guy to keep your eye out for but he's not on the contender series unfortunately but ming ding beats him and then he beats a, a couple of other prospects and kind of the way that the jck tournament does work is it is a tournament single elimination to my understanding so you fight really good prospects and then you fight guys with a four and eight record but what can you do? And then he did lose to this guy, Hubak Shang Tuliyoshi Shibeki, who I believe he's fought five times in his career and has lost twice. So he's three and two over this guy right now. But the point is he's got 42 pro fights. And I do have a weirdly uh, high amount of knowledge of the Chinese regional scene, which I, I, I know is odd. But yeah, Ming Ding, man. I'll, I'm hoping he gets in the UFC. I think this guy's good. He's fun. I mean, he's got 27 wins by knockout, 15 in the first round. Why would you not want this guy in the UFC? Hopefully he gets a good matchup because he's some pretty tough, tough guys in this welterweight list, man. Islam Dulatov being one of them. Islam Dulatov has been regarded by many as the best welterweight prospect on the planet right now. I don't know if I'd give him that high honors, but there are genuinely people out there that are saying that. And he is six foot six for welterweight, which is crazy, I'll be honest. Uh, I don't think that anyone in the UFC at welterweight is that tall he hasn't really beaten the best competition in the world but he has once again just beaten opponents with a lot of experience I mean Will Choke 61 professional fights John Palaegos 33 professional fights there and before that he was just absolutely knocking everybody out that he was fighting silly very much looking forward to tape study on this guy but yeah once again just a very very highly regarded prospect now we can move on to the middleweights, Mansur Abdullah Malik, to my understanding, actually is fighting Leo Manderson, but I can't recall correctly if that is the case, but he is 5-0 from the USA, fought for the LFA, beats a pretty decent, well, just a 1-0 prospect recently in uh, only, what's that, 100 seconds, 
So that's a pretty good one. And before that, once again, was knocking people out silly. All first round finishes in his career. All first two minute finishes in his career, aside from his debut on XMMA, which is interesting because I love XMMA and I can't recall watching that fight live, which is a shame. But anyway, Mansur Abdul Malik, 26 years old, a middleweight to keep your eye out for. I'm pretty confident he's fighting against Liam Anderson, who's another prospect here. Four wins by submission for him. He has got experience leaving the first round. And recently for the LFA, taking on a couple of prospects, a couple of guys with experience. Recently, did lose to Miles Lee, but Miles Lee, I think, is going to be a pretty good prospect in his own right at some point. 8-0 amateur career as well. You do love to see that. Very much interested to see how he is going to go. Mateo De Close, uh, once again, the UFC, man, they're going to be going to Paris every single year, to my understanding. Maybe multiple times a year with all of these uh, French prospects they've got on the card, that on, on their promotion, sorry, that are working their way up into the rankings. And they're going to need to sign more French fighters. So Matteo De Close is here, 6-2 and two record. Uh, lots of wins by KO. Bellator experience did lose, unfortunately, in an event in 2022, but is on a win streak over guys with... Uh, Pretty decent records. I mean, 3-0, and that's a very, very good one, especially when he was 2-2 two and two at the time, and then he beat a 5-2 and two opponent, but unfortunately by injury, probably due to a cut, I'll be honest, I haven't seen the fight, but I will by the time I go around to doing my predictions. Will Curry is going to be fighting against Jordan Santos. Will Curry, very good prospect out of England, probably is one of the better prospects out of England in general, but is definitely their best prospect at middleweight in, at the moment. He did unfortunately lose to the veteran at McStanson, but he has bounced back since then. He did beat the former Contender Series veteran, I guess you could say, in Leon Aliu. A very experienced opponent beats him three minutes before that, eight and two opponent as well. Has a lot of experience against good fighters, have a lot of experience against prospects as well. Lost a couple of times to CLD, but CLD is kind of proving to be a pretty decent fighter in the UFC right now. Very interested to see how the 25-year-old goes against Jordan Santos, who is a six-foot-tall middleweight with a 9-1 and record, and has been fighting for Thunder Fight, which is a local Brazilian promotion there. One loss against an experienced fighter, but that was, what, five years ago now, so not too much shame there. Four-fight win streak for him. Very interested to see how he is going to perform. Wes Schultz is 6-1, 27 years old. A lot of finishes, a lot of finishes in the first round. LFA as well. Did lose to Dylan Budka, and as kind of I said about the uh, Peyton Talbot situation, they probably did find him <laughs> through looking at Dylan Budka's previous fights, potentially, but also, of course, he has been fighting good competition in the LFA. Uh, once again, amateur experience as well. Lots of finishes, likes to knock people out, and uh, that's also what Dominic Kumberger likes to do as well, because he's got seven wins by KO, three of them in the first round, also experience for the promotion KSW, which is based in Poland, which is a massive, massive promotion over there in Europe, and um, unfortunately did lose one fight for them, but since then recently did just knock out a guy earlier this year in KSW, so maybe that is when his KSW contract run out, and here he is on the Contender Series looking to compete in the UFC, interested to see how he is going to turn out. Andrei Pulayev is 8-2, and two. he is from Russia, once again, likes to knock people out, and he likes to knock them out silly. Has fought for RCC, which is just a really, really good promotion in Russia that has a lot of really good prospects. And then, obviously, Shlemenko, Alexander Shlemenko's uh, promotion there. Once again, knocking people out silly. 19-second KO on that record. You like to see it. And also, just wins over experienced opponents. Experience in losses, unfortunately, against other prospects. And uh, experience, again, <laughs> in the amateur scene as well. Seven fights, eight fights, I should say. Sorry, you don't mind seeing that. Let's see how he goes. Torres Vinny, power. That's it, just a lot of power. I mean, look at the size of this man. This guy has absolutely massive muscles, man. And he knocked out his last opponent stiff. It was absolutely brutal. You can actually watch him on the Contender Series last year, which, if you ask me... Should have got the contract for that, but I don't know. I guess the UFC didn't, well, Dana White didn't like of his lack of experience, I guess. But 
if you don't like his lack of experience, why did you have him on the show? Um, yeah, I don't know. Just whatever. He, he won on the Contender Series, looked pretty good against another guy that they quite liked, a guy that was on looking for a fight. And Yuri Panfarov, a Matt Sierra trained guy, or a guy that Matt Sierra knew about anyway, beat him in the second round, out-wrestled him, knocked out a 27-fight veteran brutally. And yeah, he's a five foot eight middleweight, but he's not the tallest bloke in the world, but my goodness, this guy is absolutely massive. Big time wrestling experience, big time power in general, you know, like he picks people up and slams them, big time power on the feet. You can watch that brutal KO against Tyson Jeffries. It went viral on Twitter. I think he's got it posted on his Instagram as well. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing Torres Finney on the Contender Series and hopefully in the UFC. I I'm a big believer in Torres Finney, man. This guy's fun. He should have been signed last year. But yeah, definitely looking forward to seeing him. Andreas Bro Gustafsson has a fight booked, but once again, <clears throat> um, word on the street, <laughs> I guess you could say, is saying that he has been told that he will be on the contender series if he wins this fight, pretty much. So hopefully he wins this fight uh, against his upcoming opponent, likes to knock people out, and do you recognize that surname? The brother of Alexander Gustafsson, a guy who fought John Jones a couple of times, obviously, if you're unfamiliar with him. And uh, yeah, just a big time former lightweight content, light heavyweight contender, sorry, that has retired, unfortunately. But we'll see how his brother goes. I apologize. I've been talking him way too fast and I still kind of have that cold. <laughs> so um, yeah, struggling to breathe. How embarrassing is that? Now we move on to Amber Beck, Daniel Bikov. I'm really sorry about that one. He's 8-0. I believe he is the last middleweight to talk about. He is... 8-0, Russian heavyweight, with five wins by KO in the first round. All wins by knockout, I mean, <laughs> yeah, he's pretty good, isn't he? And he's beaten good opponents as well, fought for ACA, which is interesting that he doesn't have an exclusive contract with ACA, because ACA contracts are, um, I believe they're exclusive, so you can't just sign people from them, but maybe Young Eagles is kind of different. But anyway, he's 8-0, has good experience against good fighters, and he's been beating them all and knocking them all out. <laughs> what really more do you want to say? 4-5-2 to five and two opponent when he was 1-0. 6-2 opponent when he was making his debut. Oh my goodness. Okay, his team definitely believed in him, giving him those matchups. Mikhail Sazniani is 13-2, the light heavyweight, and I believe he's fighting Bruno Lopez, but I could be wrong about that. Once again, he just likes to knock people out. <laughs> a lot of wins by KO. I lost to Murtaza Talha, which I don't... I don't um, uh, think that's a bad loss, because I do think Murtaza Talha is going to end up being an incredible prospect in his own right out of Bahrain. But since then, just been knocking people out. A silly, and uh, yeah, uh, apparently fighting Bruno Lopez, I'm pretty sure, who really disappointed on the show last year against Brenson Ribeiro. Wasn't meant to lose that fight. I mean, the betting odds had him, like, minus, what... 600 he wasn't meant to lose to ribeiro he did anyway looked like an, he, he didn't look very good on the contender series i'll be honest but you need to trust me when i say this he is a very very good fighter very well-rounded just got into a firefight with the with a guy that that's his whole style and just didn't fight smart which is a shame but lfa champion at light heavyweight a little bit of cope from me talking about him, but let's just move on. Iran Satibaldiev is out of Kyrgyzstan, and I feel like you're going to see a few more guys from Kyrgyzstan in the UFC because they did recently sign the guy that just beat Alvis Brenner in Miktabik Urubai, and he has a pretty massive following out of Kyrgyzstan, and he's proven to be a good fighter, so I feel like maybe the UFC has kind of opened up the idea of signing fighters from here, but also Uran Satibaldi did recently fight for the LFA a couple of times. Actually, has a fight coming up. Oh, confirmed. Well, against Rafael. Okay, so they have been adding these fights. Okay, that's that makes me look silly in the middle of the video. Well, anyway, he is going to be fighting Rafael Sakura, who was uh, on the list. I didn't know that was actually a fight. It's interesting. I just learned about that. But anyway, <laughs> fought for the LFA a couple of times, and typically what happens is these guys from Europe or guys from Asia, maybe sometimes guys from like australia or africa they do go to the usa and fight for the lfa or also just other regional mma shows in the usa like uriah favors a1 combat to get the ufc's attention because obviously the ufc is an american company and um yeah they, they get contender series opportunities if they look good <laughs> against rafael sakura who was a guy that i thought was going to be a heavyweight but he's not and uh yeah guy with a jiu-jitsu background apparently according to his nickname but has been knocking people out silly beating a lot of very experienced fighters i feel dumb 
knowing that this this whole contender series page was actually out the whole time but it just didn't come up in the little little thing so like who knows antoine ho versus lona kevin is on there okay must be added literally as i'm recording the video i'm pretty sure but anyway let's move on heavyweights hugo kanha i think he's fought for one championship before he has and he did lose that fight but he's got a wrestling background i believe he's a national wrestling champion in brazil he's beaten good opponents on the american regional scene beaten good opponents on the brazilian regional scene here he goes coming into the contender series beat a former contender series guy in eduardo neves submitted him and Arta Lopez is going to be fighting Talison Teixeira. To my knowledge, Arta Lopez, uh, John Jones nickname. There's a lot of Brazilian fighters with John Jones nickname. Hasn't really fought anyone good. I mean, he fought for the first time in six years recently. I mean, honestly, I'm actually quite amazed. How do the UFCs find these people? <laughs> How do you know someone exists if they haven't fought for six years? That's absolutely nuts to me. But he did that, knocked him out in 20 seconds. Maybe this win went viral. And I dismissed it, even though I'm, like, always online. But anyway. Arta Lopez, John Jones, is fighting Talison Teixeira, who is, once again, just a really good heavyweight prospect. Only 24 years old, is 6'8", with an 81-inch reach. All wins in the first round. Big-time KO power. Knocked out his last opponent in the LFA. He'd kicked him. And honestly, I thought that, hey, he's going to look pretty good. And speaking of the LFA, I'll talk about that at the very end of the video. Um... Tell us and share. Good prospect. And now we can move on to the women's MMA fighters. Rose Conakal, 7-0. If I research, refresh the page, I was going to say, is her versus Fatima Klein going to be on there? And it's not, but Fatima Klein is regarded as one of the better prospects in MMA right now. And not just MMA, also just women's MMA. 6-0, uh, very good prospect. Big time grappling background. Like, big time grappling background. Amateur career going all the way back to 2019 when I think she was like 18 or 19 years old. She's looked good in her move to professional MMA and definitely is going to have a pretty tough test against Rose Kanakao, who was the LFA champion. Once again, has beaten pretty good fighters in her career. I'm looking forward to seeing that fight. I definitely think the winner of that one is going to be a prospect to keep your eye out for. Shannon Clark, now moving on to the women's flyweight, is from Canada. She is 5-0. Is fighting Eunice Dubin. Okay, we're finding out literally in real time right now because uh, these fights weren't up, honestly, when I was bringing up the tabs. She beat Danny Lopez recently in the LFA, who was 5 0. She's been undefeated fighters recently and an undefeated amateur career herself. Is fighting Eunice Dubin. I know absolutely nothing against about Eunice Dubin because she has never fought anyone as a professional with, with experience, ever. All debuting girls, how are we supposed to know how good they are? How are we supposed to know how good she is? That's going to be an interesting prediction video. And also very interesting trying to find tape. Alice Adelian is, I believe, and she's also a flyweight. So she's also going to be a flyweight. If you look into this girl, go onto her Instagram. I was quite surprised by what I saw. A lot of content that I'm surprised was allowed on Instagram. She's got like 500k followers. Apparently 3 million followers on TikTok. It seems to have like a very i would say a very sexual kind of page i guess um yeah, there's a lot going on on that instagram page that um i didn't expect to see when i was trying to research who she was she lost to Weili Zhang and then has won a lot of fights since then has built up a massive following on instagram and tiktok doing whatever whatever it is that she's doing honestly and uh here she is on the show nicole Cagliari, i believe is also a flyweight this year let's refresh the page is she going to have her fight booked? No, it's not. Anyway, she lost to Kay Hansen, who I think then moved on to the UFC after this fight or soon after it. Now a win streak coming after quite a few years away. Pretty good wins as well for a show I've never heard of. But Face the Danger is a show I have heard of. And they are a sketchy promotion according to Tapology. But yeah, that's where Gabriel Miranda just absolutely can crush his way to the UFC. But we'll move on. Let's talk about the only bantamweight that has been confirmed so far. In Claudia Saigula, out of Poland. Yeah, looks to be pretty good. Apparently has a custom rules belt taking place. But to my knowledge, she's going to be on the show. Uh, yeah, just beaten opponents over in uh, Poland, pretty much. Lost to Karolina Sobek, who I think fought for the PFL. Still might be signed to the PFL. She definitely is. She's fighting against the New Zealand fighter. I'm from New Zealand. In Bellator and Michelle Montag. That's it for the prospects. But I genuinely do believe that we are going to see some fighters out of this LFA card on the show. 
I think Ozzy Diaz is going to be on the show again, who just won literally hours ago. I think Javier Reyes, 18-3, and three, is just going to get signed to the UFC. I don't think they should mess around, to be honest with them. And um, make him fight on the Contender Series, I think, to sign him to the UFC. Gene Paul is Borneani. Had a good performance. I don't think he's a welterweight. I think he should try go back down to uh, lightweight. Maybe Cody Davis. The split decision probably isn't the best look. And I think he's only on like a one fight win streak. So maybe just another fight for Cody Davis. But then also Gilbert Nakatini, Nakatani. Sorry. Maybe on the contender series as well. This was a very, very stacked um, LFA card. I think there's going to be a lot of prospects from that show. UAE Warriors is coming up, man. Hopefully I can bring that up. And there's going to be a lot of prospects on this show as well, which hasn't taken place yet, that could also be on the show. So there's going to be a lot of information kind of coming out soon. So this video will probably be outdated, unfortunately. But that's a long, long video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Well, that's a long video.